Hi there. How are you boys and girls? I think you're fine. You look fine. I'm very, very fine and so delighted to be here with you again this day. Now today, boys and girls, I want to introduce to us a new and exciting series that we will be going through in the next few weeks. And the title of this series is Living God's Way. And um, Living God's Way is Developing the Right Attitudes. So it's a very exciting series. I want to encourage you, please don't miss any lesson out of this series. So today I'll be taking you through our first lesson, lesson one. And before I take you through lesson one, I just want us to put our hands together, close our eyes, and bow down our heads for a word of prayer. Almighty Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for gathering us here once again. Thank you, Lord, even for this new series that we just want to begin going through, beginning from today. Father, we are asking that you speak to every single one of us. Lord, minister to every single boy and girl who will be watching this series. And we are praying that, Lord, by the end of this series, we will have developed the right attitudes and we will be ready and empowered to live God's way, to live your way, to live a life that is pleasing to you. And so, Father, as I now um, prepare to just tell the lesson of today, I pray that, Lord, you would give me clarity of speech, my Father, and that you would just um, take total control, Lord, of my tongue, rule and reign, Lord, and Father, just be the one speaking to all these boys and girls, but using me as your instrument. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you. For this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So, boys and girls, the title of today's lesson is Anger or Self-Control. So, I said anger or self-control. So, these are two attitudes, and we want by the end of this lesson to know which attitude we are going to develop and how we are going to develop this attitude. Now I have a question. Did you ever get angry one time and you ended up probably saying some curse words or you ended up stamping your feet or you ended up clicking or you just ended up making a feast. Have you ever been that angry? I just want you to think about it. Now, there are certain things that can happen to us that would make us actually angry. Like, for example, if you are watching your favorite program and your sister or your brother came and she switched the channels, you'd find yourself getting angry, right? Or maybe... You wanted to go swimming with your friends, but your mommy says you have to go visit your sick auntie. So you feel angry because you want to swim, but your mom says you have to visit this sick auntie. Or it starts raining and you had planned to have a picnic with your friends. Better still, maybe you get an accident. You fall down you break your arm or you break your leg and now you're not able to play and you're missing your games, you're missing the field but you can't pr play out there because your arm is broken or your leg is broken. Or maybe if you have a little sister or a little brother, one day after you have done your homework for a long time, maybe you've worked on your homework for one hour and she comes or he comes and he draws in your homework because he's probably a baby or she's probably a baby. These kinds of things can happen to us and they make us angry and maybe they have even happened to you who's seated over there. So what happens when you're angry? I just want you to think about it. What happens when you're angry? When you're angry, you can say things that you'll be sorry for later just because you are angry. or 
you can keep silent, but deep inside your heart, you are really telling off that person who made you angry. Meaning, you have not forgotten what that person did. So that's what happens when you are angry. Now, what's this anger that we are talking about? Boys and girls, that's the definition of anger. And as you can see there, anger is a strong feeling against something or someone. That is anger. Now, anger, in other words, is losing control of your temper. And this can cause certain things. When you lose control of your temper, it can cause fighting. It can cause unkindness. You're unkind to someone. It can cause hate. And then it can ruin friendships. It can spoil friendships. And then it can also cause you to fail to be a witness for God's love. Very serious. So losing your temper brings many more other sins in your life. So don't allow yourself to lose your temper every now and then. God does not like it at all when you lose your temper. But there's a very good prayer that we can make and it is in the Bible. And this prayer will help you a lot. This prayer can help us a lot and it can help you when it comes to losing your temper. And it is found in the books in the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 139 and verse 23 to 24. I will read it from the Bible. The Bible says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. So that is a prayer, boys and girls, that you can make which will help you not to lose your control of your temper every now and then. I now want us to take a look at God's word. Now, in God's word, there are many things that we learn. And one of the things that we learn in God's word is that Jesus' disciples were people just like us. They were normal human beings, just like us. They were not super human beings. And sometimes they too got angry. Jesus told his disciples that he would die but come back to life. There was a point in the Bible where Jesus actually warned his disciples that he was going to die. Let's read it from the Bible, what Jesus told his disciples. And it's found in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 31 to 32. Let's read and see what Jesus told his disciples. This is what it says. On the way, Jesus told them, Tonight, all of you will desert me. For... The scripture say, for the scriptures say, God will strike the shepherd and sheep of the flock, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been, but after I have been raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. So we see in this scripture that Jesus was actually warning his disciples. He was telling them that he was going to be. Um, he was going to be crucified. He was going to die, but after three days, he would come back to life. I don't think the disciples understood what he was saying. And um, one of them clearly didn't understand exactly why Jesus was saying this, why it had to happen. And the name of this disciple was Peter. Peter had an answer for Jesus when Jesus said this. Let's see from our Bible what Peter told Jesus. And that is found in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 35. And this is what Peter said. Peter said, no. Peter insisted, even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. So that is what Peter told Jesus. Now, soon after that, 
Peter denied Jesus three times. We know the story of Jesus' betrayal. When Judas came and betrayed Jesus with a kiss, Jesus was arrested. He was mistreated. Those people were spitting on him and they arrested him. And it was a very scary night. All the disciples ran away. They deserted him. But there was one disciple who is Peter who followed the crowds. Slowly he was just behind and he was following the crowd. And then after Jesus was taken into the, the, the room and he was being questioned, Peter was just sitting outside there in the courtyard. And someone recognized Peter and said, this is one of Jesus' disciples. But Peter denied it. He refused and he told a lie. He said he, he, he was not one of Jesus' disciples. So he moved from that place. But again, someone recognized him and said, you are one of the friends of Jesus. You are one of the disciples of Jesus. And, and Peter again denied it. Now something happened. The third time when, they, when, when someone recognized Peter and said, you are one of Jesus' disciples, Peter actually got angry. And like I told you, the disciples, they were people just like us. And they too got angry sometimes. So at this point, Peter lost control of his temper. And he got angry. And when he got angry, he denied Jesus completely. And he said that he does not know Jesus. And he doesn't know what those people are talking about. But something happened. Soon after that, the rooster crowed. And when the rooster crowed, Peter remembered Jesus' words. Jesus had told him that before the rooster crows, you will have denied me three times. And the Bible tells us that Peter was so sorry that he wept bitterly. Okay, that was outside in the courtyard. How about inside? Inside, at this time, at, at, at the time when Jesus was being questioned and mistreated and being treated so badly, he never lost his temper. Peter was outside. He lost control of his temper. He was getting angry, but here was Jesus. People were spitting on him. He had been whipped. They were talking to him so rudely, but Jesus never lost his temper. He had done nothing wrong. Of course, Jesus is the son of God. He never sinned. He had never done anything wrong. And now here he was. He was around a bunch of people who were accusing him falsely. But then the governor somehow knew that Jesus was innocent because he tried to get the fault in Jesus, but he could not find any fault in Jesus. And around about this time, there was something that used to happen those days. They would release one prisoner. And so the governor was trying to release Jesus. And so he asked the crowds, um, maybe we should release this man because, well, uh, th this is the time to release one prisoner. But the Bible tells us that the crowds just kept screaming, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. And the governor even gave them Jesus and another very horrible criminal whose name was Barabbas. And he must have thought, Barabbas is such a horrible criminal. They'll probably prefer Jesus. But you know what? The crowds preferred Barabbas. And they said, crucify Jesus and release Barabbas. And so that is exactly what happened. We know that Easter story. But the point here is when all these things were happening, Jesus never lost his temper. Jesus showed self-control. And that's the other attitude. The first attitude was anger. And the next one is self-control. If you remember, that's the title of our lesson, anger or self-control. So, boys and girls, what is self-control? And there is a little poster. We can read it together. Self-control. Let's read it together. Keeping yourself from doing the wrong thing. 
That is self-control. So Jesus kept himself from, from doing the wrong thing. And boys and girls, God wants you to have self-control. Now, there are three things that you can do to help you practice self-control. So, one is call on God. If you want to practice self-control, learn to call on God. Pray to God daily and ask him to help you. God's word says that we are not to store up anger. That means we are not to keep anger in our hearts. And that is found in our Bible. I want us to turn to the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 26. I'm going to read it. And do not sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. For anger gives a foothold to the devil. That means that when you're angry, you're actually opening a door for the devil to come into your heart. So that's the first thing that we should do in order for us to practice self-control. That is call on God. Now the second thing is forgive others. Forgive the person who wronged you. Learn to overlook wrongs. That means to when people wrong you, don't make a big deal out of it. Just let it go. And then, do not let another person's actions make you to be angry. Don't allow somebody to cause you to be angry. Forgiving will stop your anger. When you forgive, it stops the anger. So that's the second thing you should do. Now, there's a third thing that you should do. Be thankful for what God has given you. Much of our anger, boys and girls, comes from wanting to have our own way. You want the best for yourself without thinking of the other person. Sometimes just think of the things that make you angry. You'll realize it's because you're just thinking of me. Yeah, You're not thinking of the other person. So be satisfied with what you have. Even if you don't have the best yeah, just be satisfied with what you have. God says that you can actually overcome evil with good. That means that you can actually win over evil by using good. And that is found in our Bibles in the book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 21. So I'm going to read it for you um, from the Bibles. From, from the Bible, sorry. Romans chapter Romans, I said Romans chapter 12 and verse, Romans chapter 12 and verse 21. And this is what the Bible says. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. So don't let evil conquer you. Don't let anger conquer you, but practice self-control. And then self-control is going to conquer anger. So those are three things that you can actually do and they will help you to practice self-control. So if you do this, your heart will be filled with peace and joy. If you do all these three things, your heart will be filled with peace and joy and you will be able to practice self-control. But how about, how about boys and girls when, when you are angry and it's not people who have caused you to be angry. We have talked about what to do when people do wrong to you. But how about when it rains and you are planning to go on a picnic and now you can't go on a picnic so you are angry. In your heart you are so angry. Or when you get an accident and you break your leg or you break your, your, your arm and you can't play. You know your friends are out there playing. You are missing the sun and rolling in the sun and just playing in the sun and in the grass. And now you can't do it. So now you are angry. Now this is not anyone making you angry. So boys and girls, what do you do in this case? I want to tell you something. Always remember that God knows what is best for you. And God is always watching over you. 
Now, when these kinds of things happen, let's see what the Bible tells us that we should do. And that is found in the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. So, Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 says, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God. So just know that everything that happens to you, God is going to cause that thing to work for your good as long as you love God. He's going to cause it to work for your good. So God may let things happen to you which will help you to practice self-control. So he may let them happen, but through these things, you're going to learn how to practice self-control. Now I want us to do a short exercise, boys and girls. I just want you, while you're sitting over there, to seek. And just seek in your heart. And through this question, what makes you angry? Just seek in your heart. What makes you angry? I'm also thinking of the things that make me angry. And then next in this exercise, now think. You have seeked what makes you angry in your heart. Now think. What does God say? God says in his word, and it's in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. Let's see, what does God say? Um, what does God think? What think? Um, what does God say? Just think. What does God say? And that's Ephesians chapter four, verse twenty-six. It says, "Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry." Now that is our memory verse for today. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26. Please boys and girls get that in your memory. And then the next thing is overcome. So we said seek and then think and then overcome. Now overcome you ask God for self-control. And then you forgive and you become thankful. So that is how to overcome. Ask God for self-control, forgive whoever has wronged you, and then be thankful. And then next in the exercise is praise. Praise and thank God that he will, have, that he will help you to have self-control. So that is a short exercise. Seek, and then think, and then overcome, and then praise. And that way, God will help you to practice self-control control. So now we have come to the end of our lesson. And I just want us to repeat the memory verse again together. So let's say it together again, boys and girls. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. So by the time you go to bed, boys and girls, let go of that anger. Now, maybe you are seated right there and you have not received Jesus to come in your heart and be your best friend, to be your Lord and your Savior. How is he going to help you if he's not in your heart? And you probably want to practice self-control. Well, this is a wonderful opportunity for you who's seated over there to invite Jesus to come in your heart to be your best friend, to be your Lord and Savior, and he's going to help you to practice self-control. So if you choose today to receive Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, I want you to repeat these words after me in prayer. Dear Lord, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you for practicing self-control even when you were crucified for my sins. Thank you for not being angry. 
Thank you for going on the cross willingly to die for my sins. Today, Lord Jesus, I invite you. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be my best friend from this day forth. And help me to practice self-control. Thank you, Jesus, for coming in my heart. Thank you for making me a new person today. This I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. So boys and girls, if you did say that prayer after me, I want you to know that Jesus has now come into your heart. And he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He's going to help you to practice self-control all the days of your life. Just remember what we have learned in this lesson. And Jesus is going to help you. Just do your part. So we have come to the end of our today's lesson. And so I want us to put our hands together and close our eyes for a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you so much for what you have taught us today. Thank you for speaking to every single boy and girl, Lord, who has listened to this lesson. We pray and ask that, Lord, you will cause the words that we have learned from this lesson to keep echoing in our hearts and that, Lord, we will be boys and girls who will always, always practice self-control. We love you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, even for all those boys and girls who have received you today to come into their hearts and be their Lord and Savior. We thank you for them. We cover them with the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you for saving them. We pray and ask that, Lord, you would deliver them, fill them with your Holy Spirit, and help them live a victorious life. We also want to thank you for those boys and girls who already received you as Lord and Savior. You are in their hearts and you are their best friend. We are praying that, Lord, you help them too to practice self-control and that you would crush this spirit of anger from their hearts. We thank you, my Father, and we bless you. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So, boys and girls, I just want to say at this point, bye-bye and see you again next time. God bless you.